Now, fresh off the back of the last video where I did some brandy cocktails that I thought would be a slightly more accessible. Do you know what? I think these are even more accessible for mass market. Please don't be put off by the martini or coupe glasses. These are fun and really tasty cocktails, not booze forward, element of sweetness to them. They just work. And out of all the three, I know a lot of YouTubers do this all the time. Stay tuned for cocktail three you know, or the last thing. So you stay tuned to watch the end of the video. Honestly, this is so, so good. It, I have riffed it up slightly to the original recipe, but wow, this is tasty. Enjoy. So your first cocktail is the Humble Brandy Sour. And I dare say, maybe actually the most famous brandy cocktail out there. The sour is just one of these, it works over every spirit category, whether it was whiskey, whether it was vodka, whether it was tequila, whether it was rum, it just works. Amaretto sour is a big favorite for being like bars around the UK. But for me, brandy sour, especially with the bitter riff that I've got coming up here, it's not Angostura bitters. This is delicious. So your ingredients, you're gonna to need to make this, uh, your cognac, your brandy of choice. I've gone for the Pierre Ferrand Reserve. No reason really, I just think this might be properly suited to this kind of cocktail. Um, sugar syrup, lemon juice. Um, I'll talk about this in a second. I've got bitters, I've gone for crazy bitters. These are, traditionally would go kind of Angostura bitters, but if that's on the close up there, you've got, we've got, I've got these. These are uh, Unde Vincente and they are kind of uh, a cherry forward, but lots of other flavors in there, like a little bit of mint and anise in there as well. And I think that will really work well in this cocktail. And then, um, obviously a sour would be egg white. Um, I don't really use egg white in cocktails, especially when I do hen parties and stuff like that. I actually don't, I will actually use something like that. But there's a couple of different products here. We've got foamers and we've got um, we've got an aquafaba essentially. Aquafaba and egg white will give you that silky kind of smooth texture to the drink. Whereas foamers, something like these, will give you the froth, but not necessarily the consistency. So it's up to you. Something like this though, long life, shelf stable, 600 cocktails in that, you just need six drops, jobs are good. And um, whereas this kind of once open seven days, but you can get these in little bottles, especially in the UK uh, from actually most supermarkets these days. And if you're wondering what aquafaba is, it's just chickpea juice. So first ingredient, 60 ml double bubble of your brandy of chicken choice, 30 ml of lemon juice, 15 ml of sugar syrup. This stuff from Oggs, basically 50 ml is the equivalent to one medium egg. So for this, you just want 25 ml, all right? And there's no smell or nasty aroma to this at all. Then we're just going for six drops of these bitters. Dry shake first. Now a proper shake. Then double strain into a martini or coupe glass or a tumbler with ice. Garnish a dried orange from Frona. Silky smooth, a velvety consistency. That lemon juice really amps up that brandy, that cognac, that's delicious. And then you just get that fruity element, that little sort of cherry from the bitters. Wow, that's that's really good. Make the cocktail, but play about with different bitters. After drinking that, I probably wouldn't even go Angostura bitters, if I'm honest. Maybe a generic default would be something like orange bitters. Now for cocktail two, do you know what? I said for the previous cocktail, it might be the most famous brandy cocktail. But actually, if you go back to the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, especially for mass market, this might actually steal it. This is the Brandy Alexander. Now this is such a simple cocktail. And if you don't like creamy cocktails or milky cocktails or whatever, that's absolutely fine, you know, avoid this. But I'll give you a little tip. I've not used cream in this because my little belly can't handle it but it doesn't detract. This, this is gorgeous. This is, a, this is, this is a proper dessert drink that I could actually get involved with, to be fair. But I don't think it's that heavy. I'd probably have it before dinner. Cheers. Now the ingredients for this are super, super simple, but it does, because they're so simple, you can go off on different tangents if you want and have different bitters, different liqueurs, have a little play, but to keep this really, really standard, I'm gonna stick with the Pierre Ferrand Reserve Cognac. I think that after the last cocktail, that just works so, so well, really good. Um, now you want a cacao, a chocolate liqueur. 
this is Tempest Fugit, and it's a little bit different. It's a cacao chocolate liqueur with a hint of vanilla. You don't have to go down this route, but it is actually really nice, really luxurious, uh, and I prefer it over like a creme de cacao or something like that. But you do you. Find your, your favorite sort of chocolate liqueur. There is plenty, plenty out there, whether you just go down the bowls route. But... You know, something like this does really elevate the flavour, especially with the vanilla. Uh, and then you want your cream, your half and half. I'll be honest, I don't really do too much cream and I haven't got any alternatives. So that's actually just semi-skimmed milk. It will do the same job, but it won't be as lovely and as unctuous, you know, like silky smooth as what cream would be. So nice and simple, this one. 60 ml double bubble of your brandy or cognac of choice. 30 ml of your cacao of choice. And then 30 ml of your cream or half and half, or in my case, milk. Double strain into a martini or coupe glass, or even into a rocks glass over ice. And I said you could go crazy. I'm just going to garnish with a couple of banana chips from Frona. <laughs> For me, I don't lose anything at all using milk instead of, or well, semi skim milk instead of cream. That's still luxurious and velvety smooth and, you know, gives you a cuddle downstairs. I have to say for me, that absolutely makes it, that really works with that brandy that, you know, you don't lose that brandy, but this is like, a, I like the word unctuous. I just use unctuous quite a lot because it is thicker, more robust, punches out in chocolate, but it gives you that little vanilla kick as well. Oh, that's taking the brandy, Alexander, to the new level. Now the ingredients for this, I'll be honest, I've never made this before. I'm really looking forward to doing it. So uh, brandy, cognac of choice. I'm just going to stick with that for this video. It's a great, great cognac, great, great cocktail cognac as well. Uh, liquor 43, 43 herbs and spices, big overriding flavour is vanilla. So you kind of use it in that vein, but it is like the white labelled Galliano, not the purple labelled Galliano. That is just vanilla, but the white labelled Galliano. It's got all those sort of herbs and spices in it as well. But I do prefer liquor 43. Uh, some Orgeat syrup. Swapped over to Bristol. Uh, Bristol have sent me this. It's actually really, really good. I dismissed it. But in doing it like a little side-by-side -side tasting, I really like that here in the UK. That's really good. Uh, I've got some lime juice down here. I'm back to my aquafaba or egg white. And then the cocktail calls for four dashes of Angostura bitters. Now... Um, I'm playing about with the this brand. These are non-alcoholic bitters at the moment, but as you see, there's a whole lot down there as well. Um, I just wanted to kind of see what different things come. So I've got Burlex bitters, which loosely translate as hibiscus and red fruit. Um, so acai, that kind of thing, which is really, really nice. So I'm going to split it with this. And this is the, which one's this? The Vigente Unus, because there's a Unde Vigente as well. So this is the 21. Uh, 21 herbs and spices going this. You've got vanilla, orange, coriander, cardamom. There's a whole lot going in there. So I just want to kind of see how that combination works. So 45 ml, one and a half ounces of your brandy or cognac. 20 ml of your liquor, 43. Seven and a half ml of your orgeat syrup. 15 ml of lime juice. Now this recipe calls for seven and a half ml of egg white. Now, as I mentioned before, this is 50 ml equals one uh, medium egg in here. So quick on the sort of on the spot maths. Do you know what? I'm just going to do seven and a half ml of this and see what sort of froth we get. So uh, yeah, there we go. Now when it comes to these bitters, um, it calls, as I said, it calls for si uh, four dashes of Angostura bitters. Now, uh, these are super concentrated. You just need six drops. So what I'm actually going to do is just six drops of each in there instead of four dashes. Four dashes of Angostura bitters is a lot. So it really does come forward. Now dry shake first, or you could do a reverse dry shake. It's up to you. And double strain into a Nick and Nora glass or a small coupe glass. Now, according to Difference Guide, this was a lemon peel garnish. But because of those bitters that I've just used in there, those uh, Beles bitters, which got hibiscus, I'm just going to garnish with some dried hibiscus from Frona. Well, I'm not going to lie. I love the brandy, this sidecar. That is a different cocktail. But wow, I really like that. Wow. So, 
there's so much going on here. The Orgeat syrup, the brandy. You do not lose the brandy again. The brandy is there. But the Orgeat syrup, that's there. You've got this little almondy kind of base going off there. Not overpowering, just subtle. You've got the liquor 43, those vanilla notes coming through, but those all those herbs and spices. But do you know what really shines through? Even though it was six drops, those burlesque bitters from Stillabump, like hibiscus, as I yes, I know there's hibiscus on top there, but the aroma coming off that, that is a fantastic cocktail. That I'm super balanced, well balanced for my palate. Do you know what? I'm so glad I didn't use Angostura bitters in there because I don't think that cocktail warrants that kind of feisty, tiki, you know, cinnamon allspice, you know, Caribbean spice thing going on. I really like those notes from those sort of red fruits. That is delicious. Now, I'll be honest, as much as I enjoyed those cocktails in the previous video, I think these are much more on mass market level. There is not a single flavor here that is going to put anyone off. These are not booze forward. They're not overly citrusy. They have got just that element of sweetness to them without being over sweet. I think these are some fun, fun cocktails that you would really enjoy if you're a brandy lover. I don't think these work with rum. I don't think these work with, they definitely don't work with tequila or another spirit. These are so suited to brandy and cognacs.